So today we are talking about superfoods for mood, memory, and mental functioning. So um, I'm really happy to chat about various foods. One that comes to mind right away is this guy right here. Are you eating your fish? So I brought my puppet because when we leave here today, well, what did she talk about? You'll remember that a fish came through. <laughs> <laughs> so fish has omega-3s that are really important for brain health. We'll talk more about them as we go through today, but getting two fish meals per week is really important, or eight ounces over the week. So think about, are you getting any fish now, and can you get them in? So we'll get back to talking about fish in just a little bit. For those of you that haven't met me, I'm Trisha, your nutritionist, for the next hour and about 15 minutes that we have together. I'm a registered dietitian, a fitness instructor, and a wellness coach, and a smoking cessation specialist, and I love to help people with their wellness. I'm on Facebook, so feel free to, to join me there. It's Trisha Silverman. My maiden name is Liberty. You might see that pop up. But I put interesting things on there, like just the other day, I put on a post about Nutella, because we all think, oh, Nutella's so yummy, but it's actually a lot of sugar in there. And the posting that I put on there, I found a picture that shows how much sugar is in the Nutella. And it's a lot when you boil ingredients down. Last week we looked at the coffee. Do you remember that? How much sugar is in a, in a popular donut place coffee shop? <laughs> um, yeah, it was a, a, a whopping amount of, of sugar. And sometimes it makes it easy when you just see the sugar, how much it is. And, um, and you boil it down to the, to the sugar, like in, in the Nutella, in the, in the coffee. So please join me on Facebook if you'd like to stay in touch that way. It's a fun way to stay in touch. Last week, we talked about a balanced diet. So this is just a little bit of a review. So this is the government's icon for healthy eating. This is my plate. Now, we're going to go over superfoods for, for memory and for mood, for mental functioning. But if you're eating Little Debbie's and you're eating uh, donuts that are over there, if you're eating a junky diet and then you say, well, blueberries are good, I'm gonna throw those in, they're probably not gonna have the best effect. If your overall diet is really healthy, then you're really gonna get the effects from those blueberries as part of it. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's really the overall, overall diet what we're eating so half of what we're eating that looks a little fuzzy let me just see if i can get that a little clearer for you okay so half of the plate fruits and vegetables so we want to get a lot of particularly vegetables in the diet definitely fruit too i was just reading an article which was a summary of many other research articles and it talked about how three servings of vegetables is particularly helpful for preventing against cognitive decline and Alzheimer's disease. So are you getting your vegetables in? And that icon is a good reminder to get a quarter of your plate. And the diabetes plate we showed last week showed half the plate. So vegetables really are important. Are you getting them in at both lunch and dinner? That's a really important thing to, to remember. And if we're not, just think there are simple ways to get more in. So, of course, I prefer fresh vegetables. But if it's easy to have some frozen on hand, and if that's going to get you to eat them, then, ha then have frozen on hand. But again, fresh is, is best. And then they have the bagged and boxed salads. Do you ever have arugula? Arugula is really nice. The cruciferous vegetables are particularly important for your mental health and also for preventing against cancer. So that's cabbage and arugula, kale, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, kohlrabi, watercress. Now, in the supermarket, they have the bagged salads, and arugula is one of them that they offer. What I like about, this is spinach, but what I like about the arugula is that it doesn't go as bad as some of the other cut up salad. You notice they get brown so quickly. I noticed that the spinach and the arugula seem to last the longest. So, you know, maybe give the, if you haven't tried arugula yet, that's the cruciferous vegetable, maybe give that, give that a try. And then the cabbage, it's all, the one that's all cut up that some people make coleslaw, you can get that and put some extra virgin olive oil, some red wine vinegar, 
a little dash of Italian seasoning, and you can have a salad made up of that, of that cabbage, so a cabbage salad. So just something to keep in mind, because you can save some money there, and it can you know, be an easy way to get more veggie, veggies in. But the bagged um, salads, um, bagged spinach can be really, really helpful. I'm gonna talk more about spinach too in, in just a little bit. Now, quarter of the plate, fruits. Think about shopping for that rainbow that we spoke about. So did you shop for a rainbow over the last week? I see some, some heads going up. Yeah, if you haven't, it's not too late. We can shop for a rainbow tonight or tomorrow. So getting lots of color in the diet is really, really helpful. Now, a quarter of the plate grains, so whole grains. Are you eating oatmeal? Have you tried quinoa? You know, these are nice grains to think about getting in. And then maybe you want to try other grains, like millet is another grain. Or maybe instead of your white pasta, you can try whole wheat pasta. Last week we spoke about the keyword whole when you shop. Do you remember that? I'm going to pass this around. I wanted to show you this box. So this happens to be whole wheat pasta from Market Basket, but all the supermarkets now carry their own. Look for the keyword whole in the ingredient list. That's where it says ingredients in bold underneath the nutrition facts panel. And I want you to just notice the keyword W-H-O-L-E. And that indicates that it's a whole grain. And from what we learned about last week, there are three components to the grain, the bran, the germ, and the endosperm. The bran layer, they strip away, and they strip away the germ layer, they meaning the food manufacturers, and they take the white starchy stuff and they make white bread and premium crackers and a lot of junky processed food that's out there, pretzels, and then the germ area is vitamin E, and vitamin E protects against Alzheimer's disease. And they mill that away. So when it says enriched, they took away the germ. So you're missing out on something that's crucial for our brains. Where else do we get that vitamin E? Sunflower seeds, other nuts and seeds, tomatoes, and spinach have vitamin E. So we want to make sure that we get the vitamin E in. Now, when we look at... Let me just see if they still have it on this one. They do. So on the package of nuts, these are emerald almonds. I'm looking at vitamin E, and I'm going to ask Sarah. Can you help me, Sarah? Of course. Okay. So I'm going to ask Sarah if she could tell me the percentage of vitamin E. 20%. Is that high or low in vitamin E? High. High. Do you remember the numbers from last week that were our benchmarks? We had three numbers. Yep, I heard someone say five and 10. 20% or more means high. So these are high in vitamin E. This is a much better snack than donuts. Okay, much better snack than crackers. So it's high in vitamin E. Again, vitamin E, it's a potent antioxidant and it's, gonna, it's really good for your brain health. So we wanna be snacking on things like this. I believe I mentioned to you, uh, there was a guy out in Sterling, his name was Ken. He was, he's, he was in his 90s. Did I tell you about him last yes. week? Yeah, so Ken had the nuts in his pocket and his mind was so sharp. I have no doubt that those nuts and seeds were helping to keep his brain intact and his mental functioning, his quickness going. What are you snacking on? Is it adding to your health or is it taking away from your health? We want it to add to your health and nuts are a great way. And these emerald, they're, they're in, you know, most of the supermarkets will, will have these. And then you have um, Trader Joe, Joe's, which has really good portion size nuts as, as well. And then you can buy your own and portion them out. I keep my nuts in the refrigerator to keep them, yeah, to keep them lasting a little longer. Once they don't taste so good, if you're starting to question it, it means they're probably rancid. And then that's not, they're not good anymore. So then we want to, we want to toss them. So don't buy, don't buy too many at a time that you can't get through them all. How yes? Long, what would be the average shelf life if you didn't have them in the fridge? It's a good question. I usually keep mine for a few months. What they have now is the expiration date on there. So I pay good attention to that and I keep them tightly sealed in my fridge. You can keep them in the freezer too. I keep, like, I keep my flax seeds in the freezer. 
um, and because I buy ground flax, and that goes bad really fast when it's exposed to oxygen. So I keep those sealed well and in in the freezer. Those have omega threes too. Yep. So we'll get to we'll talk more about the fish, the omega threes, and and brain health in just a little bit. All right. Protein. So the two choices for protein that I think are the best choices for longevity, the fish and the, you tell me, that's my third choice, second choice. Let's see. Beans. Beans are a food of longevity. So we want to get more beans in. And I'm not talking about the baked beans with all that ketchup, sugar, kidney beans, cannellini beans, pigeon peas, great northern beans, Roman beans. There's so many beans that are, that are out there, lentils. So we want to get more beans in the diet. That's a great source of, of protein. And when we have beans, it's good to have some ri brown rice available at some other part of the day because when we combine beans and rice, we get a complete protein, which is really, really helpful. Um, when you have just beans alone, their beans have a mix of amino acids, but they are missing some. And rice has complementary proteins or amino acids to make more of a, um, uh, more of a great protein to, to be a building block in your body to make the enzymes that you need and um, to maintain your, your lean tissue mass, your muscles. So it's, again, you know, good if you're having beans to have it with, um, with a grain at some point during the day. They used to say you had to have beans and grains together to make that complete protein, but now we're finding during the rest of the day, it, that's when it's good to have, um, have that grain. Now, um, you know, I mentioned the fish, I mentioned the beans, and then chicken and turkey, decent choices too. Red meat, I want you to limit in the diet. Red meat is associated with earlier mortality, meaning a shorter lifespan, and it's associated with heart disease and cancer. And processed meat um, is particularly associated with, with cancer. We want to be really, really careful with bacon, cold cuts. We want to really limit those in the diet. Yes, hot dogs, processed. Yeah, so we want to be, be careful with that. And now what you're seeing on the food label we want you to avoid nitrites and what they're doing now, the food companies have figured out that we don't want nitrites in our food because they're associated with cancer. And now they're using something sneaky and it's called celery powder and it sounds healthy, right? right. Rosemary just looked at me like, what? Yeah, it sounds healthy, but it's not. And apparently in the body, it can... Um, still have the same type of reaction. Uh, it, when you eat celery, it's healthy. There's vitamin C in celery, and the vitamin C seems to be protective. But when you isolate the powder, it doesn't have the vitamin C available. And then when it combines with the meat, it uh, uh, forms a compound called nitrous amine in the body. And nitrous amines are, are cancerous. So we want to just be careful to just avoid the processed meat or limit it because if they're using the nitrite, it's not good, but if they're using the celery powder, it's not good either. And it's sneaky because it sounds really healthy. It does sound healthy, yeah. So just something to be aware of. All right, and when we look at the healthy eating plate, there's dairy, and I showed you the other plate last week from Harvard School of Public Health, which just had water instead of dairy. Tufts has a eating plan for older adults and it's a similar looking plate and they have a range of liquids up there. Water is nature's beverage. If you drink juices, I prefer the fruit over the juice so that you get the fiber and the great compounds that are in just the structure of all of those fibers and you lose out when you just have the juice. So try to um, have the fruit. If you're juicing, try to juice the whole fruit so you get all of it rather than just um, having the juice. Okay, now the superfoods are within these groups and we're going to go over them and again remember good baseline diet is really important. Um, one more group that 
they don't show, but we want to have healthy fats in the diet. Can you tell me what are the healthy fats? Do you remember from last week? Extra virgin olive oil, avocado I heard over here, organic canola oil, and then your nuts and seeds, and then fatty fish like salmon. And that's um, a great place to get healthy, healthy fats. Now, fruits and vegetables may benefit your brain by reducing oxidation and inflammation. Inflammation can set the stage for heart disease, cancer, diabetes, Alzheimer's disease. We want to keep the body healthy. And a lot of us, um, when we start to gain weight and carry around extra weight, we put our bodies in a low level of chronic inflammation. And we want to eat anti-inflammatory foods. We want to exercise, keep our stress levels low, and um, eat lots of vegetables because vegetables and fruits are anti-inflammatory to stop the inflammation that may be, may be happening in our body, bodies and to protect against the cancer, heart disease, and diabetes. Now, fruits and vegetables may reduce the damage that leads to Alzheimer's disease, and the compounds in them can help improve brain cell repair and functionality. Fruits and vegetables can help to improve blood flow, and they can help to improve insulin sensitivity. Do you remember last week I mentioned something to do after a meal? Stroll. Stroll. Yeah. Did it, has anyone thought about that? You know, even if you're thinking about it and you haven't done it yet, that can really help to prevent against diabetes. If you have diabetes, it can be really helpful to make your cells more receptive to the action of, of insulin. And a lot of people with diabetes think, oh, I can't eat fruit. I've had people say to me, oh, I have diabetes, I can't eat fruit. But then the next sentence, they're talking about baking something with Splenda. And I'm like, no, don't bake that. Just have a little bit of fruit and you can have it with a meal. If you have it with a meal, there's protein and fiber and fat in that meal that can dull the effects of the blood sugar from, from spiking. So we can have, have our fruit. and. Portion size is really important too. So, you know, have your small piece. Um, let's talk about blueberries. So, blueberries, think of that blue, reddish, um, purplish color spectrum. And if you don't like blueberries, maybe you can get eggplant and have some eggplant. Or maybe there's purple, purple cabbage. Blueberries have been shown to help with short-term memory. In a study that also showed that spinach and strawberries can help with short-term memory. What was interesting about the blueberries is that they found that they may improve balance and coordination. Isn't that pretty fascinating? Yeah. Right? Have you ever heard of a friend, someone might have fallen and they broke a hip? And what happens when people break a hip? Do they get well real quickly? No. no. And it, yeah, do you find that? Sometimes it leads to other things and it's very, it can be hard to recover. But imagine by eating a healthy diet and a, blue, a diet with blueberries that we can, that can help to protect our balance and coordination. I find it pretty fascinating. And I read about the study and you can see right here in the study, they had rats on these rotating rods and the rats that ate the blueberry enhanced diet were able to hold on a little longer. Isn't that really cool? Mm -hmm. I just thought that was amazing. The other way that they test memory is they have these, these mazes that they have the rats go through. And when, they, when they're looking for short-term memory, they find that uh, when they ate the strawberries, blueberries, and spinach, that they were, a they were able to retain their memory to get through these mazes. So it's kind of interesting how they, how they study these things. But I thought that was fascinating. They're able to hold on longer. The other way that we can prevent falls is how? Slow down. Exercise. <laughs> exercise. 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 And when you see those fall prevention classes come up, really important to keep, to keep moving. Now, I have a brain teaser for you. So one of the things that I think is really important as we are aging, as we retire, that we don't just sit on the beach, that we go to the beach and read a book, that we continually learn and use our brain. So I have some brain teasers here for us today. So I want you to think about a famous blueberry. Bless you. Can you name a famous blueberry? A famous blueberry. And if you can't, I'm going to give you a hint. 
Well, that's a good guess. It's a good guess. And I'm going to give you a prize just for that guess. So do you want, these are little edamame, so they're soy food, roasted snacks, or I have a little mindful eating spoon. What do you prefer for a little prize? Edamame, okay. We're going to pass the edamame back. Enjoy. Okay, so here's the little, here's the hint. Remember this movie? Willy Wonka, who's the favorite or the famous blueberry? Yeah, you're getting it, Priscilla. Yep, pull it out of the brain. Starts with a V. It's a color. Violet. 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 Janice Joplin got it. Okay. <laughs> Janice, so would you like a mindful eating spoon? It's a mindful eating because it's a little spoon and encourage us to take little portions. You're very welcome. All right. So there's our famous blueberry, Violet. Do you remember her now? Right, didn't she eat the chocolate bar and that's, oh, she ate the blueberry gum, right? And then she turned into a blueberry. All right, so we do have more brain teasers coming up. Let's talk about strawberries. They contain folate or folic acid, vitamin C, and other antioxidants that prevent against cognitive decline. Where else can we find folate? What word does it sound like? Fol, folic acid, fol, oh, I heard it over here. Is that Claudette? Foliage. When you hear the word foliage, what do you think of? Leafy greens. Leafy greens are packed with nutrients. They are packed. Are you getting your leafy greens in? Are you? Yeah? Name the leafy greens that you're getting. Kale. Kale. Spinach. Swiss chard. Swiss chard. I hear a lot of different greens. What about collard greens? Those are another nice green to get in. Did you know that with kale, you can massage kale. You don't have to cook it. You can rub the, yeah, isn't that, yes, I know. I just found out over the last year. I was fascinated too. Yes, Carol. I know. So you take it and you literally like give it a massage. And by massaging it, you're breaking it down. You're breaking down the cell walls and then you're able to eat it. Isn't that interesting? Without cooking it. Without cooking it. okay. Yeah, yeah. So you massage it. Yes, and break it up, you know, in pieces, but you, you know, you just kind of need, need, yeah, it's interesting, yeah, I know. I was fascinated by that. The other thing I was fascinated by, I took a raw food certification course in the fall, and we had collard greens and Swiss chard, which I thought you had to cook those too. So with those, with the veins, some of the veins are too hard to chew, but you can cut the big veins, and then when the veins get smaller, you can make little cuts with your knife and then you can roll them up and put other veggies and hummus in there and make little roll-ups. It's so cool with collard greens too. Mm. And raw vegetables, really good for us. And I know not everyone in here wants to cook all the time, right? If you're living you know, alone, maybe you're like, I don't, I don't wanna always cook, but what's the alternative, cereal or crackers? You can just you know, massage your kale <laughs> or cut that big vein, make the little slices in the rest of the vein, right? Some hummus, some beans, some tabbouleh in there. Yeah, and roll it up, and it's really delicious. So just something to think about. And then you're getting all that nutrition in. And it's good to get a mix of raw and cooked vegetables in. Next week, we're talking about longevity. And a lot of the cultures of longevity, they eat a lot of raw vegetables. So there's a lot to be said for for raw vegetables, and they're easy. Having a salad is really easy. We don't have to cook it. So just you know, keep that, keep that in mind, and then experimenting with different seasonings to make it taste different, to make it yummy. There's a seasoning they have at spice shops. They do it at Whole Foods. It's called Zadar. Have you tried Zadar? I know, they, I've heard different pronunciations. How do you pronounce it? Zatar. Zatar, okay, Zatar, thank you. Z, it's like Z apostrophe A, H-T-E-R, I think. But it's been, I was in, I do a lot of olive oil tastings and I was in Whole Foods looking for Italian seasoning and they were asking me, oh, can we help you? And I said, I'm looking for Italian seasoning. And they said, have you tried the Zadar? And I said, no. And they use that in Middle Eastern countries. You could put it, they put it over kebabs or vegetables and they also put it over with um, 
with some oil um, on bread and then they bake it. But I do olive oil tastings and that's one of the spices that I have people try. After I learned about it a few years back, I've seen it written up now a lot in, in the Boston Globe on Sundays in different recipes. So that's just a different a different spice mix that you can use to make your vegetables taste interesting or beans. Another one that's yummy is garam masala. Have you heard of that one? That's another garam masala. It's another Middle Eastern spice mix. And with that one, it, that, the zadar, they do have some salt in some of the, depending where you buy it, they might have salt added. The garam masala usually doesn't. But what I find, if you just add a pinch, like a little bit of salt with it, it really brings out the flavor. We don't want to use too much salt because what does that do? Raises the blood pressure, so be, be careful with that. But to get you to eat more vegetables, more beans, it's good to know that there's other different spice mixes out there and to give them, give them a try. And if you're in the spice aisle, when you take your field trip to Whole Foods in Bellingham or Denham, it's always just ask, like, oh, what's a good mix? They know so much there. It's amazing. They, they're the ones who taught me about the Zotter. So it's good to, to um, go in and, and ask questions. Or, what about kale chips? Making, you know, chips? Yeah, if you can make your own, I prefer that over yeah. some of the chi I found some of the ones that you buy very salty. Yeah. If you can make your own, if you're looking for a recipe Google Joy Bauer kale chips. She's on the Today Show, the dietitian. She makes really good kale chips and I like her recipe. Joy Bauer and then kale chips. Yeah, I think kale chips are great. That's a really nice snack. Great alternative to um, if you like something crunchy like potato chips. So the folic acid, besides green, leafy greens, it's also in avocado, bananas, um, beans. And it's, again, really helpful for preserving memory and um, preventing against cognitive decline. Now, strawberries, what's nice about them is that they're naturally sweet. So if, you have the, if you're craving something sweet, in our culture, we tend to look for, oh, let me get some chocolate or cookie or cake or donut. In other cultures of longevity, when they look for something sweet, they grab for fruit. So it's a little switch here. We're so used to just looking for cake or cookies or ice cream. But if you want something sweet, go for fruit. One of the types of fruit that I find is particularly helpful if you're having a craving, clementines. They're so sweet. Yeah, that can really satisfy a, a sweet craving. So just something to, to, um, to keep in mind. What's great about fruit versus when you do have just candy, the candy can spike your blood sugar, which really isn't good for you. And the fruit, because it has fiber in it, the, it's not gonna spike your blood sugar like candy would. Um, so that fiber, and also when you think about fruit, it has fiber and water. And if you have a donut or if you have candy, it's easy to keep eating more donuts and more candy because it's not weighing down our stomach very much. It's really been stripped of nutrients. But when we have fruit, it weighs down the stomach. You feel full. One pastry equals about seven small apples. Yeah. I mean, would you eat seven small apples? But you might have one pastry and then go for another, right? It's easy to do that. We don't get full. But with nature's food, we actually get full. So just something to, to keep in mind. An apple a day. So who knows the saying? Keeps the doctor away. Okay, Rosemary, would you like a mindful eating spoon or some edamame? Spoon. You'd like the mindful eating spoon. All right, we'll get you a spoon. What was, what was that? I'm going to make my husband use it. Oh, very, oh, there you go. This one has some tape on it. All right, excellent. All right, so what's interesting about apples, there was a study done out of UMass Lowell and they found that apples may boost acetylcholine. Acetylcholine helps with memory. So that's kind of interesting. If we can have apples, it may boost acetylcholine. Uh, another thing I read about apples, they may help with lung function. So you really get, you know, yeah, yeah. So get your apple in. Um, 
think about again variety of foods. If you're only eating apples, I want you to get. I don't want you to think, well, grapes aren't going to give me any nutrition. No, they will. So get a variety. But apples are helpful. They also found that they may protect against cell damage that contributes to age-related memory loss. So get them in. But again, get your other fruits and vegetables in as well. Now, what's a good way to eat apple? An apple. With the little peanut butter is nice. Any other tips or tricks for apples? Bake it. Bake it with cinnamon. Yeah, bake it with cinnamon, yeah, with cinnamon. Bake it with cinnamon is really nice. And you could do it with pumpkin pie spice too. And in pumpkin pie spice, you get cloves, cinnamon, nutmeg, and ginger. Just by adding spices to your food, you get such a boost in antioxidants. It's amazing for hardly any calories. So it's great to add spices. Look at the expiration dates. Don't keep them around too long. I've been rolling in as I get rid of my older spices, more organic spices. I find that the prices are pretty comparable. So if you can bring in some organic, I prefer you do that so that you're not buying, you know, the spices like leaves, herbs and spices of, you know, plants that had heavy pesticides on them. So I would go organic. Um, consider that. I think that can be helpful. If you can't afford it, that's fine. Still get those spices in. You know, three vegetables a day seems pretty critical for decreasing cognitive decline. One study found a 40% decrease in cognitive decline compared to those people eating an average less uh, of um, average of less than one serving a day. So three servings really seems to be key. A serving, the dietary guidelines right now say that a serving is one cup of raw or cooked vegetables or two cups of leafy greens equals one serving. Does that make sense? Yep. All right. So try to get in your, your three servings. Now, years ago, we would say it would be half a cup cooked so that the serving sizes, they're changing a bit. But try to get in three a day if you can. If you can only manage because you're getting too full, the three half cup cooked servings a day, then get that in. That's great. But ideally, three servings a day. And again, the serving sizes are one cup of raw or cooked or a serving is two cups of leafy greens. If like if you were making a salad, you can picture those leafy, um, leafy salad greens. And the Journal of Neurology uh, also reported that the green leafy vegetables were particularly important. So for brain health. So get your leafies in and eating salads, great. I gave you some tips for rolling up the Swiss chard and the, and the collard greens. So find a way to, to get those in and to enjoy them. That, I find that it's a lot about enjoyment. So I really enjoy hummus and carrots. So I have no problem getting in a serving of carrots because I just enjoy it. That's why I asked, how do you like your apples? So baked apples, um, apples with peanut butter. Find a way to enjoy these foods so that it's easy to get them in. Because if I'm telling you to eat collard greens, you're like, oh, I really don't like them. You're probably not going to get them in. But maybe if you have them rolled up with some hummus in there, you might find that kind of tasty. So you want to find ways that make vegetables taste really good. And there's a very lonely area of the library called the cookbook area, <laughs> right? And everyone that got themselves here today can cook because you, you found a way to get here. You can find a way to, to follow a recipe and just try vegetables in, in a different way. So let's talk more about spinach. This truly is a superfood. And we spoke last week about percentages. And I just you know, want to give a quick review. Vitamin K, 510%. Vitamin K is a bone builder. Most people only tell you that calcium and vitamin D are bone builders. Vitamin K is too. So spinach is a bone builder. Folic acid, 40%. Vitamin C, 40%. Vitamin A, 160%. So now that you learn that 20% or more means high in a nutrient, and I'm rattling off those percentages, it truly is a superfood to get spinach. You could have it in your, as a salad, in your smoothie, we can cook with it. It just, it goes so nice with so many things. Do you all like spinach pretty much? Yeah, is, are most of you eating it? 
Yeah, okay, excellent. Yep, so that's one that you really want to think about getting in. Now, it doesn't mean to say that other leafy greens don't have as many nutrients. They happen to have done a lot of studies on spinach, which makes us know, you know how wonderful it really is. So it's a great source of the folic acid we mentioned earlier that helps to protect against Alzheimer's disease. Spinach may also protect against macular degeneration. Um, stroke protects against cancer. It's a good source of magnesium, which lowers blood pressure, also may help us sleep better. And then also, um, is, it's a bone builder. Now, when you add fat to greens, like some nuts and seeds, or extra virgin olive oil, it can help you to absorb some of the nutrients. So keep that in mind, because some of us may still be thinking along the 1980s terms of fat-free, but we do want to be getting in the nuts and seeds. Sunflower seeds are among the cheapest of the nuts and seeds. Peanuts are pretty cheap too, but sunflower seeds are really inexpensive. So if you're looking to get a good bang for your buck, sunflower seeds are um, something to think about buying. Okay, so who's this guy, this famous spinach eater? Popeye. So the trivia question is, what is Popeye's child's name? Where was that? Oh, great. What's your name again? Beth. Yes, Beth. You were here last week, Beth. Okay, Beth. So would you like a mindful eating spoon? You'd like the spoon. Smaller spoons encourage smaller portions. There was tape on it, so it got a little sticky. So I apologize. You're welcome. Enjoy. Yes, yeah, so smaller spoons are really key, and especially if you do indulge once in a while, let's say in ice cream, it helps you to eat a smaller portion and helps it to last longer, right? So yes, the mindful eating, I call it the Silverman spoon. What was that, Priscilla? Rosemary eats ice cream every night, so she can use her mindful eating. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Poor she Rosemary. Every morning. Okay, she excellent. You move, that's wonderful. And there's little Sweet Pea, by the way. See a little, little, do you guys remember Sweet Pea? So cute, okay. All right, so for optimal energy throughout the day, we wanna decrease added sugar, junk food, and refined foods. I don't believe I showed you all of the sugar in soda last week. We didn't do that, right? So I brought it this week to show you. Now this can be a lemonade or an iced tea. It can be, it doesn't have to be Coke, it could be a Pepsi. If we look, this is all the sugar in one. Would you, I know. Would you ever put that in a tea or a coffee? Anyone. I still haven't met anyone that would, right? So it's, that's a lot in there. If you added one of these to your diet every day, how much weight would you gain at the end of the year? 15 pounds. If you took one away, you could lose 15 pounds. Kind of interesting. Now, portion sizes have grown. We spoke about that last week. Now a lot of people are drinking this size. Now, if you're drinking this size, I know, would you ever? But it's so easy to drink this stuff. So easy, it goes down so fast. How much weight would you lose if you took one of these away from your diet, one a day? Oh, you're all in the right range, 26 pounds. 20, yeah, 26 pounds, one of these a day. Now, I know it's no one in Norfolk. It's no one in Norfolk, but someone is drinking these guys. Yes. They, no one in Norfolk, okay. No one in Norfolk. But, but think about at the, when you might go to a restaurant and they keep bringing refills. You could end up eat, drinking a lot of this. Look at all of the sugar. I know. Isn't that awful? And where does... I know. And where does the sugar go? It goes right here. And it's never too late to give up the sugar. I met a town clerk on the North Shore, <coughs> excuse me, and she gave up sugar in her 70s. And the weight came off. The weight came off. I meet people all the time that change their diet. So it's, it's never too late. Sometimes our mind just gets in the way because we think, oh, it's, it can't happen for me. But it can. You just have to find what you can change. You know, what's, you try different things. And the sugar can really have that effect on us. So if you added one of these to your diet every day, how much weight would you gain at the end of the year? Higher. Yes. 
69 pounds. Oh my God. One of these a day. Oh it's just like the coffee drink. The coffee drink I showed you last week, the one that's 900 pounds. I mean, yeah, 900 calories, that's 90 pounds over the year. Yes, I know. It's absolutely scary. So, yes. Yeah, that was the Girl Scout. I think we did, no, the caramel. coconut caramel. Coconut caramel. But there are... 47 yeah. teaspoons of sugar? Yeah, 47.75. Oh, excuse me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we, we just, you know, we want to be... Those of you that weren't here last week, we showed how much sugar. And it's about roughly this size. Actually, I think I... Yeah, I'll just pull it out. I think I have it right over here. Um... Yeah, I was showing people earlier today. So it fills up. It comes up to about here. You can see where I filled it up to earlier. And that's all sugar. But it tastes so good. And it creates reward pathways. The brain remembers. So you don't want to try. Don't even bother trying this stuff. Because you don't want to crave it. They put whipped cream on it. They do. They put that too. Yeah. It's, it's dang and I don't think they include the whipped cream in the calorie count. But 900 calories, so that's 90 pounds at the end of the year. Yeah, it's, um, it's pretty scary. Um, so just keep that in mind. And what's sad is that the companies that are in our country that are promoting this kind of stuff, they're expanding all over the world. So we're bringing our junky habits to other places. And we really need to take their good habits and bring them here, which we'll talk about next week when we talk about blue zones. So there is a lot of good work being done to actually try to get us eating like healthier places across the world. So we want to be careful with the sugar. I mentioned last week that sugar can affect the brain. The hippocampus area of the brain is responsible for memory and the sugar can decrease the volume of the brain and particularly the volume of the hippocampus. Shrink the brain. Oh, who wants that? And then the diet soda is associated with stroke and dementia. So sugar and artificial sugar, soda, diet soda, it's not good for our brain health and for our longevity. And diet soda is associated with an increased risk for stroke. That's so scary to me. When I first heard that in 2012, when the first big study came out about it, I said, people are going to stop drinking this stuff. But they didn't. No. They didn't. And then another study came out last year and people acted surprised like, oh, wow, stroke. Yeah, but that was in 2012 when that other study came out and it was on the news back then. And it lasted a few days. It got a lot of press, but then people kind of forgot and they drink this stuff. I had a question in the class early today. What about Coke Zero? All of that stuff. Thumbs down. Nature's beverage is water. We want to drink water. Yes. What about crystal light? Same thing. It has Same junky, thing. yeah, artificial sugar in there. Okay. Yeah, and you can bring your labels in too. I'm here next week, so bring your labels back. Happy to look at them. Yes. Um, did you ever comment on protein drinks? Yeah, it's a good question. I don't think anyone brought it up last week. First off, I want to say if someone is going to their doctor and if you're malnourished and your doctor says, we want you drinking protein drinks to bring up your weight, I'm not, I don't want to argue with that. So that's a whole separate thing, like protein drinks to if you're underweight and your doctor wants you to, to, to gain weight. For a healthy active ager, senior or older adult, do you need protein powder? Do you need a protein drink? Well... What I would want to do is look at what you're eating, and I'm, I'm a dietitian, so I want a food-first approach. So are you getting your protein in through, through enough food? And if you weren't, then I might entertain some added protein, protein powders. And then I would want to look at labels with you and make sure it's a really good brand. Because um, I see when I look at protein powders, a lot of junky stuff being added in. And the way the proteins were isolated, sometimes they're using um, chemicals that I don't agree with. Um, so if I'm doing a protein powder, I want it to be really clean, organic if possible. Um, and if it's not, I want to read that label and, and look for a good, good product. So it's best to try to get your protein through food first. And what's interesting is that our 
country and a lot of the research done in our country supports higher amounts of protein to maintain your muscle, muscle mass. When you look at cultures of longevity and what the World Health Organization says, they differ and say we don't need as much. So it's a little tough to know what's the right answer for people. I will tell you this, when I was looking and searching for the answer to how much protein should people eat as they age, I started to dig and look at a lot of research and I found out that there's one researcher who does a lot of studies and a lot of people quote his research. And then I kept looking at different sources and I found that he's a speaker for beef.org. Oh. So I, it just wor it worries me when someone's taking money from the beef organization and they're the ones writing all these studies. So it's hard to, it is hard to know, but there is a lot of research saying that, um, that eating protein and moving and eating enough calories can help you to preserve your lean, your lean body mass, meaning your, your muscle mass, which is what we want to preserve so that we can stay independent. One of the things when I, I wrote a manual for active aging um, this year in January, and I'm turning that into, into a, a book. Um, so one of the things that, that I found through my reading is that 25 to 30 grams of protein per meal, if you're doing three meals a day, can really help to preserve your lean body mass. And that's supported by, again, a lot of the research done in our country. If you find that you're not, you can't get up to that amount, just know that people living in other areas of longevity, they're not doing that much, but they are moving a lot more than we move in our country. So it helps you to preserve your lean tissue mass, your muscle mass, is eating food, getting enough protein in, and moving. And the resistance exercise is particularly important. So lifting your weights, gardening where you're pulling, digging, right? And yoga. You're getting resistant, you're getting some you know, good work out there. Um, but that weight training, Tufts University showed that people in their 90s were able to increase their strength and flexibility in their 90s by starting a weight training program. So no excuses, it's never too late. <laughs> Everyone in here can start, oh, my leg hurts. Well, you can do upper body stuff then. You can do chair exercise. So throw your excuses goodbye. If you want to, you know, have fun, maintain your independence, travel, then we want to move and we want to try to think about doing the weight, weight training, yoga, really, really important and to garden, to be active. Being active is important and where we live, it can get tough the, over the winter time. And that's where, you know, coming to the senior center, taking advantage of the great classes here can be really helpful. All right, so this is the picture of, of the brain, and that's just a, a little reminder that the sugar um, may decrease brain volume. So we want to be careful. Where else is sugar besides the sugary drinks? Where else is it, the added sugar? It's everywhere. It's everywhere. It's in ketchup and sauce and frozen meals. They, and they're so sneaky with the names of it. And they divide it up. You'll see cane sugar, dextrose, maltose, sucrose. I mean, you know, organic cane sugar, crystallized dextrose. I mean, they use all these names that they sound nice, but it's all sugar in the end. When you see O-S-E, O-S, that indicates a sugar, O-S. Maltose, right? Maltose, glucose, dextrose. A lot of those energy drinks will say like crystallized dextrose or they just make it sound you know really wonderful and it's not yes um, in regard to the sugar sweeteners yes you know they're not good for you but what about truvia and stevia which are supposed to be made from yeah. natural plants? so when you look at sugar sugar came from a sugar beet or sugar cane and sugar beet kind of looks like a potato and sugar cane is like a stalk. And those were from nature, but you look at sugar and it's this white 
crystallized stuff. So it goes through a lot of processing to become sugar. Just like stevia, when it's natural, is in a leaf. But when we buy it, it looks like sugar. So it goes through a lot of processing. Truvia has erythritol added to it. Erythritol is a sugar alcohol that can be irritating to the intestines. When you see a compound that ends in I-T-O-L, erythritol, mannitol, sorbitol, maltitol, and erythritol, these are sugar alcohols, the carbohydrates that don't get digested very well, and they can be upsetting to your intestines. So we just, we want to be really careful. If we have irritable bowel, inflammatory bowel, um, Crohn's disease, or something, or we feel something's just not right, it could be the sugar alcohols. The new food label that's coming in in 2020 and 2021, um, by 2021, all companies will have to have the new food label. And that's going to have the, we spoke about this last week, but the area for added sugar. And my fear, if you remember from last week, is that companies are going to start using more sugar alcohols and more artificial sugar. So we have to know what those are. The artificial sugars that are approved in our country, sucralose, acyl sulfame, potassium, neotame, aspartame. We want to know these names so we can see it and say, no way, I don't want that sucralose. I don't want that acyl sulfame potassium, which sounds healthy, but it's not. Um, so we just want to be careful. So back to your stevia question, the Truvia has the erythritol added to it. Um, if you go to like Trader Joe's, Whole Foods, sometimes you'll see the stevia without the erythritol. It has a bitterness. So they tend to add other things to it to, to take away, you know, like that little side effect of the bitterness or they're using it to bulk it up. Um, so just be careful with it. I know of a woman in a class that reacted to the erythritol. So it's just good, good to know. Because it's so processed, I would say just don't go overboard with it. I prefer, if I want a little sweetener, honey or maple syrup in small amounts. Um, that's, that's what I prefer. And um, so just, just be careful. And the honey, local honey, because honey may um, have a good effect on your immune system. And I use a big may. I haven't really seen a lot of research on that. But... The bee, you want the bees to be in the area where you live. So don't feel like you have to spend a lot on Manuka honey that's from New Zealand because the honey in our area may be more beneficial for us because the bees are in our environment. Yes. Sugar in the raw is also processed, just not as, as much, um, but it, it, is, it is processed, so just just be careful with it, it's still sugar. But it's not as processed as the white stuff I showed you last, last week. I do a whole class on sugar, maybe in the future we can do that, and I show a diagram of the processing and how the raw sugar, it goes through one processes of um, processing and it gets crystallized once, where other sugar just gets, it goes through um, more processes of processing. And when they process sugar, they can use sneaky ingredients. Um, one that comes to mind when they make sugar is defoaming agents. So when you boil up a sugar beet, when you're making your sugar, um, some of the protein in it can cause foam to arise. So they need a defoaming agent. And one of the approved substances is formaldehyde. Oh. Formaldehyde. Look it up. Defoaming agent FDA. And you'll see it's listed there. I'm like, what? And no one knows this stuff. Because it just gets buried. I like to dig it out. <laughs> I do. I, it fascinates me. I get excited about it. And it's, <laughs> I do, because it's just so shocking to me. It really, really is. Um, so we want to be careful because when we have, you know, I keep pointing over to donuts because they're a good example, but when we have donuts and then we have sugar, so not only may there be defoaming agents that were used when they made the sugar, but it could be that that sugar is made from the sugar beet and 95% of the sugar beet in our country is genetically modified and that's a whole other can of worms. So it's best just to eat food. If you remember my saying from last week, I told you what my grandfather said. Do you remember? I believe I told you. You did, yes. 
I know you're trying to pull it out of your brain. You want to eat what grows from the ground, swims in the sea. Yeah, so you want to eat what grows from the ground, what falls from the tree, and what swims in the sea. So we want to get back to more natural, natural foods. It's really, really important because the more you read about processing, it's so eye-opening. And I have a whole class on what's in your food where we can talk a lot more about that. But it's, it's just shocking. So the more we can grow our own food, even if you grow some herbs on your countertop, it's, it's really taking you in a good, good direction. Do they have community gardens in Norfolk? Yeah. They do. Oh, do any of you take part in that? That's a nice option that they have that. Yeah, that's great. All right, good to know. All right, so the artificial sweeteners. Well, some animal studies have suggested a link to cancer, so we want to be careful. And then this is where I mentioned the 2012 study, so that is in your handouts, and the 2017 study um, found that link between the diet soda and the um, stroke and the, and the dementia. Now, in 2016, there was an Italian study that found a dose-related response to sucralose. So the more sucralose the mice consumed, the more malignant tumors that they had. Yeah, isn't that scary? Yeah, and malignant is the cancerous. Um, so we want to be, be careful. And sucralose is what you find again in Splenda. So what are we talking about next? The fish, can you name a famous fish? What was that? Nemo. Salmon Nemo. Oh, you won again. <laughs> oh, my. Where did you get the spoon? Do you want some? Okay, wow. Yeah, so Nemo is a famous fish. That's good. You must be eating your fish and your blueberries and strawberries, I'm sure. You do, see? And you move and fish tonight. And you mentioned she exercised at two hours in the morning. So, wow. That's great. Very sharp. All right, so we want to eat fish for brain function, one to two fish meals per week. So it's about eight ounces over the course of the week. So the archives of neurology found that eating one to two fish meals per week decreased age-related mental decline by 10 to 13 percent. Wow. This is equivalent to being three to four years younger mm -hmm. just by eating one to two fish meals per week. And think, you know, opening that pouch of salmon, it's easy to do if you don't want to cook. So that's, that's a really good alternative. Um, and then if you're dining out, how many of you dine out at least once a week, go to a restaurant? So maybe about a third to a half, third, maybe about a third of you. When I dine out, I always look at that as an opportunity to eat fish. It's just the way I look at things. Like, oh, if I didn't make fish that week, oh, it's an opportunity to, to get fish. And most restaurants will have salmon now, which is nice. And a lot of times they have salads. You could add chicken or salmon. So that's an option to, to think about. So um, make sure we're, we're getting fish. The other study that I thought was pretty interesting, this was in the British Medical Journal, and they found that eating one or more fish per week, um, people showed a 60% less risk for Alzheimer's disease. And I don't remember if I told you last week that I, I didn't eat fish for a while, and then it was from all the research I started reading that I added fish back to my own diet. And, um, and I noticed a big difference. I had dry patches that went away, my eyesight got better when I added fish and nuts and seeds to my diet. Um, so. Are you getting fish? Are you getting nuts and seeds? Really important. Now, studies show that countries eating more fish experience less depression. So fish is definitely associated with brain health. The omega-3 fats in fish make up the structures of your brain cells. So I want to tell you about when I moved into my home in Needham. So I move into this home and my bathroom, which still needs to be redone, by the way, my upstairs bathroom, I move in and I'm like, this is weird. Like the wood that makes, I thought it was wood, it gets wet and it just kind of falls apart. What do they call that wood? Particle, Particle board. What do they call a good solid wood? Hardwood, Hardwood like oak, oh, right? Oak comes to mind. So I think about our brain cells in this way. Do you want hardwood or oak brain cells 
Or do you want the particle board? <laughs> what do you want your brain cells made up of, right? Because the, the, the omega-3 fats that are in fish, that are in um, pumpkin seeds and chia seeds and flax seeds and walnuts, the, the omega-3 fats, also soy foods and organic canola oil, they make up the structures of your brain cells. They're essential. So if we don't eat them, we're just missing. So our brain cells need to be made up of inferior fats. For me, it was affecting my skin when I wasn't getting those um, essential fats in. It was affecting my eyesight. So think about what do you, it's never too late to just start eating some more walnuts, to start tossing in some chia seeds. I was just at your Organic Buzz Cafe. Have you gone there? They have this fun little chia seed pudding that I just tried. So you can get your little chia seeds and it's all natural foods there. It's a fun little place to go. And um, that's a way to get, you can make your own chia seeds when you add a liquid to it and you let it sit. You can add your chia seeds to um, oatmeal and put some milk in and um, some nuts, maybe some fruit. Put that in your mason jar and the next day you'll have that overnight oatmeal ready to eat. And the chia seeds, and again, you can try them right at that cafe, they get gelatinous, almost like ta if you've had tapioca before, if you can mm -hmm. picture that consistency, but they're, they're smaller. Um, so that's you know, pretty yummy to try. But think about your brain cells. What do we want them to be made up of? So we want the good fats in our diet. Really important to try to get them in. Now there are several fish, and I noticed your handout may say four fish to avoid. Yeah, change, just cross out the word for, because they've actually changed this recently. Does your handout say big eye tuna? So, yeah, good, okay. So the rest is correct, but there's more than four now. So it's big eye tuna, king mackerel, marlin, orange roughy, shark, swordfish, and tilefish. These are the fish that have been shown to have higher amounts of mercury. So you want to be careful with these fish. I have some people getting angry with me. My dad's one of them, like swordfish. And he ordered it with me one night. Just try it, he's telling me. Just try it. Like, I just don't want to. I don't want to eat it. I know it has high mercury. I just don't want to. I don't care how good it tastes. There's a million other fish out there. I'll have some salmon, thank you. But people get mad that, like, I didn't make that up. I'm just, I'm the messenger. And I read about it. And I'm sharing with you the guidelines from, from the government. And they tell women of childbearing age, you know, if you're pregnant to avoid this. But I think all of us should be careful about too much mercury in the diet. Now, light tuna is a better choice over the albacore because the albacore is higher amounts. But you can mix your light tuna with salmon in the can or in the pouch to, um, you know, this way you get the omega-3s from the salmon so you're not missing out. Yes. Do they have light tuna in water? They do. Yeah. Yeah. Light tuna, yeah, and that's the best way to get it, really, get it in, in the water. Okay, so these omega-3 fats that I talked about, they make up your, the structure of your brain. They may decrease dementia. They may decrease inflammation. Um, the inflammation that leads to your heart disease, arthritis, diabetes, cancer. They can increase serotonin levels. Have you heard about serotonin? That's a feel-good chemical. A feel-good chemical. If we want to feel good, the fish can help us. It can have an impact on our mood. It may help to pre uh, treat depression, irritability, and anxiety. It may reduce symptoms of bipolar, attention deficit, and schizophrenia, which is really interesting stuff. And I wrote articles for Bipolar Magazine, Schizophrenia Digest, and two depression magazines. Um, and that's when I started reading all this stuff on omega-3s. And what we hear about in the media and magazines is this much. But there's a whole body of research that really supports eating foods that have omega-3s in them. The other thing I want to mention, for because this seminar is about mood, one thing that's key for mood that's not even a food, what helps with mood? Exercise, Exercise is so critical. In our country, you know, doctors are so quick to write out prescriptions for pills. When exercise, in other countries, they really push exercise to help with depression. So exercise can help. Another thing that can help if we're feeling down and depressed, and we'll talk more about this next week, is volunteerism. Well, if you're not feeling good, then you can volunteer, and helping other people can help you to feel good. 
Christine, I have a question for you. How, how can people become volunteers here? Is there a, like a waiting list to become a volunteer? Well, one of the programs that we're encouraging is a friendly visitor program. Oh, for elders. okay. Yes. That's so special. That's, so that's really nice. So, and what is it called again? It's friendly Visitor. Friendly Visitor. I remember in Walpole, there's a lovely woman named Peg, and Peg would come to my sessions or my seminars there, and Peg volunteered at a nursing home. And she would tell me stories like the, the residents of the nursing home would love when she came around. They loved it. And she loved it. It felt good to her that they were looking forward to her coming, you know, going there. So there's always different kind of volunteer activities you can get involved with. And this sounds like a really lovely opportunity that you can visit people at home. So if you're not feeling so great, volunteering can really help you to feel good. And it can give you a purpose. Peg sure had a purpose. Her purpose was going and bringing her sunshine to that nursing home. And you all have sunshine in you that you can bring around. Um, and we'll talk more about that next week as well. All right, so the fish that I mentioned, I want to make sure I didn't leave any out. I might not have mentioned herring, um, but salmon, herring, bluefish, trout, anchovies, sardines, all seafood has omega-3s. These just tend to have a little more than others. And salmon is one of the big ones, and you see that a lot now. The restaurants have caught on to that. All right. I mentioned the vegetarian sources of omega-3s. Those are in your handouts. I didn't mention hemp. Hemp seed is becoming really popular too. That's another seed you can add to your smoothie or put over your yogurt or um, sprinkle over your oatmeal or over your salad. So it's another seed that's growing in, in popularity. Eggs are pretty interesting too. They contain a compound called choline. And I mentioned earlier to you that apples may boost acetylcholine in the body. Well, choline, um, that's a compound that was just recognized in 1998 as an essential nutrient. And we can find it in egg. It's in the yolk, I, which is surprising to a lot of people. Because for years, right, people are doing their egg white omelets, but they're, it's actually in the yolk. It's also in cauliflower and iceberg lettuce. Mm -hmm. I know, right? Yeah, people always think, oh, it doesn't have nutrients. It does, it comes from the ground, right? It's not a Twinkie, it's lettuce, <laughs> right? <laughs> it comes from the ground, so it does have nutrients. When things grow from the ground, they absorb nutrients, so it does have nutrients. Sunflower seeds, remember I said that's a cheap seed? Mm -hmm. Cheap meaning not cheap bad, but cheap that it's inexpensive. So that's a good seed to think about bringing in into your diet, sprinkling it over. A salad is kind of fun. Um, your eggs that you eat, besides having choline, if the chickens were fed flaxseed or soy, then they tend to have more omega-3. Some of the eggs will say it on there, omega-3. So that's another way to get some more omega-3. The American Heart Association, what they say about eggs is that when we used to put a limit on them and now you want to think about what are you eating the rest of the day so if you're having if that's a night you're having meat then don't have eggs that day right because you're having an animal food later on in terms of the cholesterol but if you're having beans for dinner then you know maybe eggs are a decent choice then for breakfast that's how i try to look at my diet well you know what am i eating the rest of the day if I'm having animal food at breakfast and lunch, then maybe I should have a bean-based dinner. So it's just a different way of, of looking at food. Eggs also contain lutein and zeaxanthin, which are important for healthy eyes. Who's this famous egg? Humpty Dumpty. Priscilla, did you get a prize? You said Humpty Dumpty first. I'm going to pass that back. And now, who is willing to sing the Humpty Dumpty song or to recite it? Yeah, yeah. You'll get a mindful eating spoon. Who knows the Humpty Dumpty? Mike, you're dying to say it. Oh, it's everyone. Oh, wow. Okay, Joan of Arc gets the spoon. Here you go. Thank you. All right, guys, that was wonderful. I'm so impressed. That's great. Yeah, yes, yeah, but no one needed the book. You just, that was good. All right, so soy, soy foods, so these edamame roasted soybeans, 
They contain choline, which we just mentioned was in the egg, also in the iceberg lettuce, also in sunflower seeds. That may improve memory. Soy foods have omega-3s. They have isoflavones, which, which also may improve memory. Um, where else do we find soy? Well, tofu is soy, soy milk, um, soy nut butter you might find in your supermarket. I like to get the soy in the most natural state. So the soy beans that you can either boil up, they do have them frozen too that you can microwave some. For those people on thyroid medication, just be careful because uh, soy may interfere with the thyroid medication. Don't take it at the same time as your medication and talk to your doctor because your doctor might not want you on soy. And if you have um, breast cancer or have had breast cancer or are at risk for it, just be careful because some doctors don't want you on soy. That being said, in countries where they eat more soy than our country, like Asian, in the Asian part of the world, they um, have less breast cancer. So it's a little tricky with it, but listen to your doctor. All right, whole grains. So we spoke about whole grains. One of the things that's nice is that they have the B vitamins and they tend to mill a lot of them away when they take away the the bran and the germ, they take away the B vitamins and they turn your food into energy. And then they're important in mental functioning and um, dealing with stress. So we want to make sure, look for that keyword whole when you're shopping for your grains. And also when you eat whole grains like brown rice versus white rice, it has a more stable effect on your blood sugar. And that's important for diabetes, but also Alzheimer's disease. Okay. Now, just talking a little bit more about diabetes and pre-diabetes, and again, you have that great class coming up. The strategy that helps to prevent against diabetes also helps to prevent against cancer and prevent against heart disease and also keeps our brain really, really healthy. When we are eating a lousy diet and lots of sugar in the diet, it can lead to diabetes, but diabetes and Alzheimer's seem to be somewhat linked. So we just, we wanna be really careful um, in terms of just keeping our inflammation down in the body, keeping control of our blood sugar levels. So here are some strategies, eat more whole foods. That means whole grains, that means a higher fiber diet. Where do we get fiber? Fruits and vegetables. Fresh fruits and vegetables. And? whole grains, beans, nuts, and seeds. The beans are heavy hitters, 40% in just half a cup, 40%. This happens to be cannellini, but kidney beans, great northern beans, Roman beans, pigeon peas, lima beans, lentils, you name it. Eat the beans, just not jelly beans. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> But eat the beans, yeah, really good stuff. And make sure you rinse them if you're getting them in the, in the can. Um, rinse them at least and drain them at least twice to help get rid of that, the sodium. Decrease uh, junk food and refined foods. Eat a decreased saturated fat diet. So what's a low saturated fat diet? That means limiting the animal foods in the diet, limiting the beef in the diet, limiting the butter in the diet, and choosing extra virgin olive oil instead because extra virgin olive oil, that helps to decrease inflammation. So it's better for our brains. Watch your portion sizes, choose your fats wisely. So we want to eat the nuts and nut butters, the seeds. Um, we want to move more and then we want to achieve and maintain a healthy body weight. And again, it's never too late to, to do that. We just want to try different strategies. When you said you've tried everything, if you told me that, I have so many tricks up my sleeve that I can ask, have you tried A, B, C, D, E, F, G, um, and then all the way up to Z, and then one, two, three. There's just so many different tricks, so you never want to give up hope if you're struggling with your weight. Now, there are foods that can ensue calmness. So when we're looking on mood, if we're feeling anxious, um, Serot we want to boost serotonin in the body. And the strategy to boost serotonin is whole grains alone. And I, if you have diabetes, this wouldn't be the best strategy for you. But having carbohydrates alone can help to boost serotonin in the body. And I interviewed Dr. Judith Wortman out of MIT. 
And she mentioned, and I have it in your handouts here, that 25 to 35 grams of carbohydrate with hardly any protein can help to boost serotonin. It can, boot, it can make you feel, improve your mood. It also can make you feel more sleepy and calmer. That's what serotonin does. And what, so I gave some strategies. So you would do this, let's say, if you were having trouble sleeping, um, you might want to try an hour before bedtime to have a sleepy snack. Or let's say if you're feeling anxious. So what that could be, three-fourths cup of cashew heart-to-heart cereal. And it's between 25 to 35 grams. So we're not talking about a lot of food. It could be a Matthews whole wheat English muffin with one tablespoon of Kimes apple butter. It can be some fruit spread on two rice cakes. So it's just a strategy to try if you wanted to, let's say you're, you're struggling with mood, but you, didn't want to, you don't want to go on pills, try moving more. Give this strategy a try. See, some people have cut back their carbs so much because they think carbs are bad that it is affecting people are crankier. Um, and there's popular diet now is the keto diet. And that talks about really low carbohydrate. And I don't agree with that diet at all. So just something to, to think about. Now, the flip side, protein can make us more alert. So it's good to have protein as part of your lunch for sure to make you more alert. If you just had, let's say, spaghetti alone for lunch, just the spaghetti lunch, that's going to boost your serotonin. You're going to feel sleepy and kind of good. <laughs> <laughs> But if you want to feel awake because, you know, you have scrapbooking coming up later on or another activity, we want to make sure there's protein as part of lunch. So um, your fish, turkey, chicken, your beans, your yogurt, um, tofu, eggs. So um, protein important to make you feel awake. Now, nuts are a good source of the vitamin E that we mentioned earlier. And again, the vitamin E may protect against cognitive decline and heart disease. So the diet, again, we're talking about prevents against a lot of issues that we don't want. We don't want to see diabetes, heart disease, cancer, um, cognitive decline. So it's all interrelated. It's just a good, healthy diet. There's really one overall good, healthy diet. And next week in our class for longevity, we're going to, um, to talk more about that. Spices. I mentioned earlier, getting herbs and spices in your diet can really increase the antioxidant content of your diet for hardly any calories. Curcumin is in turmeric, and that's known as an anti-inflammatory spice and may prevent memory loss. Now, I hear people say, no, I'm taking curcumin pills. I'm taking turmeric pills. Don't do that. Just add it to your food. Make a nice curry and enjoy. We want to enjoy food, just like cinnamon came out that that may help um, lower blood sugars and people start buying it in pills. No, put it on your oatmeal. Don't take, we, pills aren't, we don't want to take pills to solve the problems if we can get it through food. And breakfast is also another way to help to boost your brain power. It's associated with more energy, better memory and reaction times, better math scores when they test children, more creative thinking, more speed and efficiency in solving problems, and better work performance. Also, faster thinking and, and concentration. So we want to make sure that we're, that we're eating a breakfast. We want to eat to fuel our activity. So breakfast and lunch, that's fueling us. We don't need a big dinner because we're probably going to bed a little while later. So we want to want to eat for when we need that energy. Other energy boosters. We spoke about moving your body. Sometimes I'm too tired for exercise. Well, exercise will give you energy. It gives you energy. Eat every three to four hours can keep giving you energy. We want to get seven to nine hours of sleep. Decreasing the junk food can boost your energy. We can feel better when we decrease the sugar. And think about eating protein, carbs, and healthy fat at meals and snacks. And I think that's my next, yep, I have a, my next slide will show you that and we'll go over that and we're going to be wrapping up shortly. And then think about quitting caffeine 8 to 12 hours before bedtime. Caffeine can, um, can really rob you because it, it can make you, make it harder to sleep at night and then it can make you more sleepy during the day if you get on, if you're not getting enough sleep. So caffeine for some people can really have, have an, a, a 
bad effect. For other people, it can be fine. So if you're having trouble sleeping, I would think about giving up caffeine. If you don't have trouble sleeping, then, then it, caffeine may be okay. And it is associated with some well-being too. So, you know, we don't, you don't have to give up caffeine if it's not bothering you. Um, 400 milligrams or less per day is the recommended amount, and that's about three eight-ounce cups. So we don't want to go beyond that. And not overeating. So overeating can make us feel sluggish. So when we eat, if we have carbs, protein, and healthy fat in a nice mixture, that can be very energizing. So that can be, an example would be an apple with nut butter. So an apple is giving you some carbs, nut butter is giving you some protein and healthy fat. And then let's say we did some, um, let's say we did some rice for a carbohydrate with some salmon, um, and then we did some olive oil on there, and then, you know, adding some vegetables in there as well. We're getting a mixture of carb, protein, and healthy fat, and that can really be energizing. When we do just carb alone, um, what that can do sometimes is spike our blood sugar where ooh, we feel really good, and then we might kind of crash a little while later. It does help with that sleepy strategy I spoke about, but um, it can cause you to, you know, a, an hour later feel feel like you're crashing a little bit. Now, some healthy snack ideas, um, apples and string cheese. So if you do string cheese, you're gonna get some protein there. And in, in the apple, you're gonna get some carb. Hummus with veggie sticks is a really lovely snack to have. If you're doing crackers, we wanna go with whole grain crackers. Uh, like Acmac or Wasa crackers, and then yogurt and nut butters like cashew butter can be a really nice choice. So that um, can be something fun to try. This is Faye yogurt. So it's a Greek yogurt that I, I think is really yummy. Um, and then some meal ideas that, that can be helpful. So if you haven't done tofu before, that's another really nice plant-based protein that can be really easy to cook with, uh, making a stir fry with veggies and brown rice. And in the supermarkets now, you can get vegetables that are already cut up, ready to cook, and that can save you some time. Um, some well-rounded meal ideas, having fish, so salmon at Trader Joe's, they have a nice a uh, spread called artichoke antipast, which can make fish just um, taste really nice. And then if you had salmon with half a baked potato and some kale that you massage or an arugula salad, that can be a nice balanced meal. So you're getting your, and also a meal for optimal brain functioning as well. Um, potatoes also can help to boost that serotonin. By the way, there was a book years ago, Potatoes, Not Prozac. I don't know if any of you have read that one. Yeah, isn't that interesting? Yeah. And now potatoes have gone out of fashion. Next week, we're going to talk about the purple potato. So I'm excited to share about the purple potato with you. Um, all right. So who can tell me who this famous guy is? Jack, Jack. Jack B. Nimble. Jack Who's going to tell me? Can you tell me the... You you won so much. No, We're gonna. I need well, someone. I don't want it. Over the candlestick. And I would give it to you. You deserve more because you're very sharp. But you're going to win. So, <laughs> Rosemary. So can you pass? Oh, I bow down. Yeah. Pass that back. Is it Kathy? Yes. yes, Kathy. All right, great. So that's. Whoops. Sorry about that. That's just a reminder. Um, Jack was jumping just to move. We want to move more. The last thing that I want to mention is a study that came out of the Journal of Neurology, and it found that overweight middle-aged adults tend to score more poorly on tests of memory, attention, and learning ability than their thinner peers, which may mean a higher risk of dementia later on. So there's something with being overweight that is, that is problematic, and it does cause inflammation. So it's the inflammatory factors that the fat is generating the inflammatory compounds that travel around the body and can cause damage elsewhere. So we really want to try to um, maintain a, a healthy weight. So with that, I want you to think about what we chatted about today and last week, because some of the things overlap, like shopping for the rainbow. And I want you to think, what's your takeaway for today? What are you going to do that'll make this time worth it for you? Is there, are you going to go get a cookbook at the library and try something? Are you going to eat more fish? Does anyone want to share their takeaway? 
Lemon yes. Tree has a oh. great cookbook selection. Yes, it does. Yes, okay. Yes, we do. Oh, yeah, good. We do. Thank you. They have a yeah. cooking club, too. A you have a cooking yeah. club? Yeah. A cookbook club? Cookbook. Read, it and, read it. it and eat it. What does read it and eat it mean? They share they the food? They have a new cookbook. You read it, and they share meals from that cookbook. Really? Mm -hmm. At the library? Mm -hmm. People cook like they bring the food in. That's a beautiful yeah. way to meet you all the people. Really? Did you all know about that? No, no. no, that's so great. Wow, thank you for sharing. That's really, I haven't heard that anything like that, but that's wonderful. Yeah, that's a great, especially if it's a healthy cookbook, not like, you know, barbecued ribs. <laughs> but, right, but still... <laughs> but, you know, we'll talk about social interaction next week because that alone is really huge for longevity. So just even if it's not the healthiest meal, just the fact and even the fact that you're cooking from, you know, your own food is healthier than it would be at a restaurant in general. So that's great. Thank you for sharing. Other things that you want to share, other takeaways? Eat healthier snacks. Eat healthier snacks. Mm -hmm. Yes. And what did I tell you that Ken took out of his pocket from Sterling? Nuts. nuts. He's a hundred now, Ken. Yeah. Nuts. Snacking on nuts. They're, they are meant for us to snack on. It's nature's gift. Nature's gift. Other takeaways? Can we have one more takeaway? More fish. More fish, more fish in the diet, yes. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We'll see you next week. Thank you. And, que yeah, I'm free to take questions. Sure. Say that again. Yeah, so... So BMI, the question is, is BMI a good indicator of weight? It's such a good question. As we age, to taking the combination of BMI and waist circumference is really helpful. The reason that that is, is because as we age, some of us tend to shrink a little bit. If you've shrunken a little bit, the BMI may not be the best indicator, but when you combine it with waist circumference, that can be very telling. Yep, so combining it. Other qu yes. You've done any studies on BMIs caused by soy? I haven't seen that, but I'll look into that. That's interesting. Have you seen anything on that? Or, or you have? Yeah, I haven't heard about that, but I'll have to look into that. Yeah, thank you for mentioning that. What have you heard? What? Well, I've seen two different sides of it because. I felt like my hair, I was losing my hair more. Okay. And then I read something about that soy, so I've been avoiding soy. Oh, I didn't, I haven't heard about that. That's and interesting. I, you know, I don't know okay. what's in my mind, but I think it, it has helped. Okay. That's interesting. I haven't seen that at all, but thank you for sharing. It doesn't mean that it's not happening. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. And my other question was the difference between you say any difference between farm raised and wild salmon. Okay. So if you can afford wild, then I think wild is the way to go. However, I remember one time where the wild was like nineteen ninety nine a pound. I had to buy a pound and a half. And the um, conventional was like six ninety nine. Um, with the conventional, you're still getting a lean protein, you're getting the omega-3s. When you look at studies, I believe I've seen a study where the vitamin D content is higher when you, when you get the wild. And it doesn't, feed, the fish are feeding on natural, their natural environment. When they feed in the conventional, the farmed fish, they're feeding them, it's not the best feed from what I've seen, but you see at Whole Foods, you'll see that some of the fish farming is, is getting better. And if you're buying it farmed, that would be a place I would go. You can ask them, they know a lot about it. But if you can't afford it, what's the alternative then? Are you gonna be eating crackers for dinner? So I would prefer that you do get the farmed salmon then. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it's still good for you. It still is the omega-3s. The best would be wild, yeah, but, but you're still getting health benefits with the farmed. They also, for salmon, I don't like that they pull a, put a colorant in it to make it look like it's wild. So that bothers me, but it's still better that you get that than not eating, not eating fish. 
Yes. I tried the packaged salmon. I found that it was very salty. It seemed like it had a lot of sodium in it. Which one? In the pouch? In the pouch? Yeah. Yeah. Me, I be, maybe I've become very sensitive. No, you, you, I mean, you could absolutely be right because they do sometimes add, add salt. But I think I've seen, look at the labels. You might find with one like lower sodium or reduced sodium that might be helpful. And then rinsing it can be helpful too. Yeah, thank you for sharing. Other questions or comments? No, okay, thank you everyone. Thank we'll you. see you next thank week. You. Thank you, thank you, Carol. Thank you.